Good morning, friends, and thank you for joining us for our family story time this week. Since it was Groundhog's Day this week, I thought I'd share some of my favorite groundhog books. But first, let's get started with our welcome song. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Hello, friends. The first book I have for us today is called A Greyhound, A Groundhog, written by Emily Jenkins, and it's illustrated by Chris Appel Appelhans? Apple. A hound, a round hound. A greyhound. A hog, a round hog. A groundhog. A groundhog, a greyhound, a round little greyhound. A greyhound, a groundhog, a brown little groundhog. <gasps> looks like he's yawning and waking up. And looks like our greyhound is giving a big stretch. <laughs> A groundhog, a greyhound, a grey little round hound. A greyhound, a groundhog, a found little round hog. <gasps> See, you look a little spooked by this dog over here. A round round hound, a round groundhog. A round brown hog, a round gray dog. A round and a round and a round and a round. The ground and a hog and some gray and a dog. Looks like they're giving each other a big chase. You ready for some more chasing? A round hound, a gray dog, a round little hound dog. A gray hog, a ground dog, a hog little hound dog. A round and a round and a stound. And a stound. That's a neat word, isn't it? A stound means to be amazed or inspired or maybe a little overwhelmed. Astound. The, the greyhound and the groundhog are astounded by these beautiful butterflies. A bog and a sound. Do you see the reflections in the water? And a log on the ground. And around, and around, and around, and around. Whew, it looks like they are all tuckered out. Well, this one's a bit of a tongue twister, so I think my tongue is all tuckered out too. But I think this one's just lovely. Next, I have a funnier one for us. But first, did you guys know, and I learned this the first time I ever did a Groundhog Day story time. So groundhogs actually have three names, groundhogs and woodchucks and whistle pigs are all the same animal. Isn't that neat? Well, let's learn some more about groundhogs in Groundhog Gets a Say, written by Pamela Curtis Swallow and illustrated by Denise Brunkus. Oh, everyone's bothering the groundhog. It's time. There's his nose. Here he is. Will he see his shadow? <gasps> yes, he does. Then we'll have six more weeks of winter. The crow says, he's going to be impossible. The squirrel says, he's getting a fat head. And his other friend says, he's great, huh? I want to be just like him. Well, that was February 2nd, Groundhog's Day. Now it's February 3rd. Groundhog gets a say. 
I don't get it. Where is everybody? Yesterday I was big news, a star, king of the mounds. Everyone wanted my weather report. Today, nothing. This happens every year. My holiday ought to last longer than a day. I just don't do weather. Groundhogs deserve better. A week, maybe. No, make that a month. February should be Groundhog Appreciation Month. He's the old, he's already the only animal with a national holiday. And yes, you, unless you count the turkey. But look where that guy ends up at the end of the day. Shush, this is important. Okay, groundhog. You think I'm just a groundhog? Nope, I'm also called a whistle pig. In danger, I whistle very loud. And then I go, Phew, as in, Phew, it's over, danger passed. Doesn't look like he can actually whistle. He's just going, Phew. He's trying to make us think that name's all about the whistle and not about his pigginess. I can think of a few other names to call him like Mr. Full of Himself, says Squirrel. Hey, you're talking about my hero, says the little groundhog. And I even got a third name, Woodchuck. If only I had a dollar for every time someone asked me, how much wood could a, would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? The truth is, I'm not into chucking wood. I'm more interested in moving dirt. Lots of it. Maybe the poem should go, how much ground could a groundhog hog? says Crow. I'm a digging machine. I can move about 700 pounds of dirt and rocks in one day. And how about this? My ears don't even get dirty. I have ear flaps that keep them clean. Yeah, but look at the rest of you, says Squirrel. Actually, groundhogs clean up nicely. We're very neat, says Little Groundhog. Okay, back to Big Groundhog. I don't dig any old which way. First, I go down a few feet, then up a few, up a foot, then down again, then hump in my flood bump. <gasps> Is that the little hump in his flood bump? Okay, it keeps the burrow from getting smoked in a storm. See, groundhogs are always thinking. My burrow is popular. Neighbors scoot in to avoid danger. Some can't wait to move in when I move out. Look, indoor plumbing. That's classy, says Squirrel. I told you we're tidy, said Little Groundhog. Well, maybe you're not a hog, said Crow. Okay, and then here's our map. It says main entrance, and then there's a nest, a potty, a spare room, and the exit spy hole. Hmm. Big Groundhog. Of course we're not hogs. We're related to squirrels, but we're bigger and rounder. What did he just say? He can't be in my family, said Squirrel. You can pick your friends, but not your family, says Crow. People everywhere love groundhogs. We're in the family of rodents called marmots. So the people who love us are called marmophiles. Folks who study us are called marmoteers or marmatologists. Not groundhogologists, says Squirrel or people with too much time, says Crow. Right, remember the mess he made in Mr. Moody's garden, says Squirrel. I can think of a few folks who aren't fans of your so-called cousin over there. Gardeners can be very excitable, says Little Groundhog. You think I have to stay on the ground? Only if I want to, I can climb trees. So now he's a tree hog too, but let's see him fly, said Crow. And I can swim too. I don't love it, like Cousin Beaver, but I can hoggy paddle. Mm. Seems to us that you're a bit slow on your feet, says Crow. Like a bullock with legs, says Squirrel. Well, uh, um, if you must bring that up. Okay, we're not all that quick as animals go, but we can run as fast as an average fourth grader. What do you think? Do you think that this groundhog can run faster or slower than you?
Yeah, I'd probably be faster than me. I'm, I don't think I'm faster than an average fourth grader. <laughs> Bet you can't sneak up on me. I'm very alert. That's how I deal with predators. My head is like a submarine periscope. My eyes, ears, and nose are set up high so I can see what's around. Look at the predators. We've got fox, dog, coyote. <laughs> My nose is so terrific that I've got my own caller ID system. If you've been by my borough for a visit, for a visit, I'll know about it. Yes, I can live in all kinds of places, fields, woods, thickets, rocky areas, or under sheds and porches. I'm not fussy. Same is true for eating. We're not picky there either. I'll eat grass, dandelion greens, clover, grains, barks, insects, fruits, veggies. Yakety yak, yak, yak. My ears are tired, says Squirrel. You must spend as much time chewing as talking, says Crow. Speaking of eating, my chompers aren't just for chewing. My fabulous teeth even help dig my burrow. They're strong enough to gnaw through roots and move rocks. And I can shatter my teeth so loudly that my enemies turn and flee. Can you do that? Didn't think so. Well, I can do that and more. I have special teeth that keep growing. Gnawing keeps them just the right length. Too long like that beak of yours wouldn't be good. Hey, we squirrels have those kinds of teeth too. Maybe we really are related. But how do you keep your teeth short during that long snooze, says Squirrel. Hibernating, not snoozing. It's not the same as snoozing. There's more to it. Before the weather gets cold, we snack like mad and cover our bodies with fat. You mean pig out, whistle pig, says Crow. Shh, I want to hear about the teeth, says Squirrel. I'm getting to that. When I'm ready to hibernate, I go down into my burrow and seal myself into a lower chamber so that no one will disturb me. In my hibernation slumber, I barely breathe, only about once every six minutes. Can you imagine holding your breath for six whole minutes? I barely, oh, and my heart beats only once every four or five minutes. Everything slows way down. My teeth even stop growing. That's amazing, says Squirrel. It must be very dark and stuffy in there. Don't you get hungry, says Crow over here. Nope, my amazing body isn't doing anything except getting thinner. I'm barely even aging. I'd like that. I'm tired of being called an old crow. So you wake up just to give us the weather report, says Squirrel. Well, yes, and uh -huh. when the days are warmer, I also feel the need for a snack and a date with a mate. When I find a date I like, we chuckle and chatter at each other, and we touch noses and rub cheeks. Aw, that's sweet, says Squirrel. Very cute, says Crow. Yuck, disgusting, says Little Groundhog. I'm not only cute, I'm helpful. Scientists are trying to figure out if people could hibernate as groundhogs do. They study us to learn more about body rhythms and cycles of animals, including people. Do not disturb October to March. That would be pretty nice. Maybe one day folks will climb aboard a space vehicle and hibernate and wake up on Mars. Wow, that would be something, says Squirrel. I'd sign up for one of those trips, says Crow. I hope there's food on Mars, says Little Groundhog. Okay, cousin, I admit you're pretty cool, says Squirrel. Yeah, you've got a few talents, says Crow. You're the hog. Operation Groundhog will start immediately. The world will know the hog truth, says Little Groundhog. He's got all of his recordings and interviews. And sure enough, there's Groundhog's book telling us about Groundhogs. The end. Well, thank you for joining us this morning, friends, and I hope you're all having a lovely week. Make sure to join us next week and have a good weekend. Should we do our goodbye song? Okay. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. 
Goodbye, friends. It's time to say goodbye. Bye, friends.